saw it as a very personal thing that has my initials, Roland Agambira. So I said, no, let's make it RLG Communications, which is the same Rogam Links Ghana. Just to bring in Ghana and to make it a unified thing, let's show that we have the heart of Ghana behind us and we'll make sure that we won't disappoint Ghana. Okay. Now, you, you, you were given an award by ECOWAS. What were the awards? What, what, what have they recognized about you? Well, maybe I, I like to pick the award itself so that uh, uh, people out there will, will have a look at it. Well, I have just been told because I've been working very closely with the communications manager of your company, and uh, she told me that this award was only last week. Yes. So what? What? I mean, somebody who was selling cigarettes, who was a kuli kuli seller, yes. and now uh, sweets to fuel, and now being recognized by Equus. <laughs> what? Well, I mean, what have you done? Yes. Yeah. That is the ingenuity um, from the humble beginning. As, and um, still moving forward and looking for more opportunities. And this is one of the opportunities that comes with creativity. ECOWAS realized that they needed in the ICT sector an innovation that have a product, that is an ECOWAS product, that can be spread across into the world. And you know that today, even gift and everything, the phone is more than your basic need. People prefer to purchase a phone than to eat. Mm. So, if um, today we are witnessing to a product right here in Ghana, which is sold all over, we've got we are now in Gambia. Nigeria will be opening soon, end of this month. In uh, Africa, we are there, and then Togo and the rest were getting in there. Now we have not only limited ourselves to the West African continent. As I speak with RLG, we have RLG Hong Kong. RLG Hong Kong also manufacture and distribute. So what we do is, instead of buying some of the components from elsewhere, we manufacture from RLG Hong Kong and then ship it to RLG uh, Ghana. Are you are the chairman of all of that? Oh yes. And for 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 us to be able to compete favorably in the in the world, and especially in the Asian world, where you know now there is an economic shift of opportunities in the Asian world than the Western community today. Mm. So we have seen the same opportunity again. To be able to compete favorable in the world of business, you have to have a stake there. So that when you are talking to the same people, you understand what you are talking about. And you are not an engineer at all. <laughs> not an engineer. I'm just an entrepreneur. What an engineer can do, I keep on saying that everybody has a skill and a talent. I don't know how to fix a phone, but I know how to bring the resources and then I have an idea as to how a good phone works and bringing all this and I, I invest in the people. The engineer needs some kind of investment to be for him to think straight and be able to give you the quality that you're looking for. And that is the investment that an entrepreneur needs to do. Well, let, let me cut you short. Yeah. And now, uh, considering your age and where you are coming from, Africa. Yes. Has there been any time that uh, when you get to Hong Kong, you are in India, you are in America, you are in UK, Germany, and they say, "Oh, the monkey, the African monkey, has come again." Yeah. No, these things, I see them as uh, normal things and they are jovial things. Obviously, you can always change the mindset of people mm. when you start talking to them. Even from um, the time I, I, I was exporting and I was roaming in the world, I meet so many customers who never believed I was a person. They speak to me on phone and the very first they meet me, they have to ask me so many questions whether I was really the person because of the kind of business and the kind of conversations we engage ourselves in. So having to meet people, even people come here and I can tell you, people tell, tell me I'm a Nigerian because they come in here and they still feel that maybe the owner of the business is still somewhere. And, yeah, and, and, if not and, and, because I'm sitting in front of you yes. and uh, perhaps your, your communications manager may send us things that uh, you have already on Kong yes. and you are also, I'll say, oh no, I want to see the chairman, not <laughs> the one you are taking me yes. to. But what, what has really made you to still maintain your humility? I mean, that's the angle that I'm interested in. Yeah. Uh, in spite of all of this, you have not allowed uh, the sources to enter your head. So, wh wh what has been the, the guiding principle? Maybe I should, I should put it that way. Um, 
You see, if you don't follow the ladder of success by engaging yourself in all these things I talked about, and all of a sudden you become successful without going through the difficult times that needs to shape you up, that needs to continuously remind you that success and failure they are brothers and sisters. It's like water and oil. The two come together to be able to be juicy. Now, anytime you are successful, just know that as the fame blows around you, and you wake up the next morning and you can be a failure. So, if you have these principles, you will never be overwhelmed, no matter how much fortunes you make. Because you know that life is vanity. And for me, I believe that creating opportunities for others is the most uh, fascinating thing. And that is what I enjoy. I enjoy to see people being happy that somebody is working in the group, in all this, uh, all the organizations you see under the group. They all have chief executives. They are all happy because they believe in the vision. And they are not working because somebody is going to be on them every day to work working. But they are working because they think that they also need, and I inculcate that culture, they also need to create opportunity for others so that people can be engaged. RLG has a target to employ 30,000 youth in the assembling plan. 30,000 youth? Yes. The assembling so. plan, we now want to be able to uh, um, fabricate right here in Ghana because we are getting oil and most of the byproduct of the oil can be used for fabrication so that we can also export those uh, fabricated materials instead of just doing the food. That is not our, our, our only area. We are engaging ourselves into the assembling of um, laptops, um, LCDs, so that you don't need this. They all run on one platform. The plant that assembles phones is the same plant that assembles laptops, LCDs, and all that. And you don't need to waste so much money in buying an LCD that will come with a lot of costs because where it is coming from, the manufacturer has some tax to pay. And by the time it gets here, there's some, going to be a tax element and it's going to move into various hands, chain of distribution, before it gets to the final consumer. We will make it a one stop from manufacturing into the market. So we cut so much out and people in this uh, part of the world will be able to enjoy these things at very affordable prices. In the US, you can spend $50 one whole month if you go into a grocery shop, you buy a lot of things, $50, and it's enough to take care of you for one month. We cannot, we are not, uh, how much is our per capita income? We spend more than $50 just going to a grocery. We are poor, but things are so expensive for us because we have not created that kind of ambience for our people. Mm. With all that we are engaging ourselves in is to be the end users or every business uh, uh, or every entrepreneur that thinks about business, thinking about engaging into commerce, buy and sell. We have to change that uh, attitude of trying to create something that will help the local economy to grow. Because if you buy too much, there's no way we are going to create any opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because what we are buying and selling, it are only creating jobs and opportunity for the country that the, the country of origin of that mm -hmm. product. Now, have, have you uh, had any contact with the government once? Maybe. Uh, government financing your activities or what? Because I, I'm, I'm really surprised with all this that you are doing. Maybe there's a backing uh, from the government. No. What we do is, we rather engage the youth by giving more services to government. What government, in anything we do with government, we partner. We partner with government to be able to train. So, of course, uh, there is service charge that the company will charge but we go, we have a significant contribution of whatever service charges we charge the government. And most of uh, our programs that we even run with government, if we even engage ourselves with any service charge, we pay back. Yeah. Because we believe that even creating that opportunity is a million dollar opportunity that we are going to earn a lot out of it. And so we, and we are advocates that when you take so much, even when you take from government, it's better to pay back to government so that other people can also get the same opportunity and also engage themselves in the same way 
if they have the opportunity to also get some kind of uh, uh, arrangement with government. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, like uh, the kind of uh, engagement that uh, people feel you just have to, government have so much money so they can just splash money on the business. No, no, no. So you 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 are uh, advocating that uh, we shouldn't put everything on government. No, because the, the, you should know that in this part of our world already, we don't declare surplus in our budgets. Mm -hmm. We always have deficit. So now, if we can create the opportunity that you generate enough value, and if you are you you, you are lucky, that government even buys into your vision mm -hmm. and can give you that opportunity to create that environment that. Tomorrow, that business is going to grow, and we are going to be the final beneficiary of that business. Why won't you pay back the government so that at least government will be able to use that to help other uh, ingenious entrepreneurs like yourself to be able to create more opportunities? If you have one million entrepreneurs today in this country, we will still find our place because it is not a problem of being able find a place. We have so many opportunities that we are not tapping in. It's solely well in Africa that you have enormous opportunities. We don't need to engage ourselves only by being the, the African continent that sells only raw materials mm. to the outside world. It's being processed and brought back to us and we pay premium price for it. We should move away from that and look at creating that product that can also be exported. Last year, I have people from Greece who came because they wanted to engage themselves into RLG phones. So and people come from Greece yes, to take RLG phones to, 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 to Greece. And then mm. all that they were also was how do we train some people so that they can service them. And of course, it's not a problem. Giving ourselves the next few months with our L9 being launched, the smartest, it's going to be the smartest phone in, in, in the world. And it is, uh, I can assure you, it will take a place in the world, not just in, 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 in the African continent. And that is what we, 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 we want to do. So that at the end of the day, we can also add value to the product and export it to the world, mm -hmm. not to be the, the end receivers of what we've always worked hard and exported, and value, little bit of value is added to it, and we become the receiving end of everything of our own. My goodness, can you can you understand how this the chairman is saying that right here in Africa, uh, those that we call the white men will come to Africa to buy products from us and sell in their own land. What what a big thing in Africa. But then let me ask you this question. So many people want to find out the durability of your product and the cost that maybe uh, uh, people see you dressing this wonderfully well. They say, oh, it's only for the high class, those who speak good English. It's not for probably the, the, the market uh, men and women. So, looking at your products, what class of people would you say it, it, it fits in for? Or who can go for it? It cuts across. Everybody in the, in, 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 in the market can use RLG form. We don't target, even the person and the people we engage in the training program are the very people who have not been to school, yet they are part of the process. Now we are training 6,000 at the moment, just in the plant. And these are the people who are able to assemble the food at a very low cost. Now, we even have a policy that allows people, if anything even goes wrong with your handset, you can just get a replacement and we give two-year warranty. That tells you the kind of durability and the confidence. You give no, two-year warranty? Two-year warranty. Nowhere in the world do people give two-year warranty to mobile phones. Maximum one year. Mm -hmm. But RLG... Six months. Yes. But RLG have the confidence in our product and we know what we put in the market is the best. Now, if you go into the market, most women have become... Um, um, our, our R5, which is the least uh, price phone, and become popular with most of the market women. This is a phone that they can relate easily with it. We are looking at even uh, getting the elderly, the age, uh, handset. That is what we are developing now. Mm. So that they can also, the keypads will be more bigger and 
more listening. So that when and we are also getting into producing a, a handset that can take care of the blind mm -hmm. because we also want them to the key part is going to be brain so that they be able to also communicate. Mm -hmm. If you are blind doesn't mean that you cannot communicate. And it will have some features that will even help you detect some kind of medical uh, problem so that it will be connected to hospitals. But that when there is a problem, the person is blind, can go out from your home and when there's a problem you'll be able to press on that bell and it can send a signal to a medical doctor that there is somebody in this house and there's this problem. If there's any help. Well, I, if I have my way, I, w I will allow this program to go for two hours but because of certain things. And of course, uh, the program is an hour long. Uh, going by, I mean, looking at your shadows, uh, today you are in Hong Kong, uh, tomorrow you are in Germany, uh, another week you present to Ghana, you collect the award, you go again. What time do you have to, to relax to the job? <laughs> As for me, Working is relaxing. Mm. There is nothing like relax. When you die, you have all the time to relax. In <laughs> but that would be the grief. Yes, but they are relaxing. Oh, so that's this the best way to relax. Yes, this is a time to work. And as you engage yourself, busy working, you become younger and more effective and efficient. Maybe I should ask for your age. 36. And you are looking younger. Yes. But uh, is your wife not complaining? She has to. She's been part and she's part of the business. So oh. once you're part of the business, how do you complain? So she she rather stays late to and then who prepares the food when two of you are still in the office? No, no, no. She, she prepares the food. Oh. And obviously, I do not uh, like to eat anybody's food apart from my wife's food. You know, not to but I want to take you out for lunch. That's different. That is business. Okay. Obviously, even when I get home late and I can't eat the following day, I still eat the food. Of course, you want to be able to engage every day, have that kind of rapport mm -hmm. with your family and talk to them and make sure that, apart from the business, you are just the normal person that you have been together, you know, all this while. And so it's quite important to raise. Mm -hmm. kind of Before we are about running, how do you cope with females around you? appreciating the the beauty of God in your life mm -hmm. and again having the way with that to take good care of them driving good care I mean good cars traveling up and down and they would like to come around you to say oh I liked uh, the, about three days ago uh, or four days ago you hosted the uh, Ghana's most beautiful no Miss Ghana Miss Ghana yeah yes uh, was she not showing interest <laughs> unfortunately I didn't even see any of them oh you know what I do engage myself in projecting the business. You see, most often than not, people project their image more than the business. It's wrong. You, you don't know the owner of all the big companies that you hear about. That is how I, I want to project all my organizations. I shouldn't be bigger than the business. The business should be bigger than me. I can tell you if I'm walking on the street, you might not even identify that I'm the person. And I do that often. So, um, and Fame, money, and women, they are all uh, part and parcel of life. How do you manage fame in money and women to be able to succeed? You, you don't need to be afraid that you have female P, uh, peers or um, even male friends wanting to engage themselves. You, you definitely, even so many people who don't even know you, or who doesn't have a relationship with you, want you to even be their friend. They can even waste much of your time than just the female ones that you might think about. But once you have a focus and you know what you're doing, mm -hmm. it's not a problem. All these things, you, you don't engage yourself in a necessary uh, kind of encounter mm -hmm. that takes away the real issues. If a female uh, admires you, it doesn't take away anything. You're a human being. But it is the, 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 the reaction that would take you away your job. If you think that because you have made so much money and therefore every female that you find around you must have some kind of acquaintance with the person. You engage yourself all that time instead of thinking. After a while, your mind will not even be able to create anything and all that fortune will be gone. 
and that is when you see that all those things become vanity. So I find myself twenty four seven. That's why I told you working. Wow. That's so if even if you have that mindset, you don't have space mm. because ninety five percent of the time is engaged in giving out some kind of quality work to society that is looking up to you because RLG is out there. What will I do to ensure that they group tomorrow? Nobody comes back feeling shattered that you have disappointed them. That is the biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. And based on that, you will not want to fail anybody by engaging yourself on unnecessary things. Well, you still belong to the to the category of the youth. Yes. So what's the message to your colleagues? For the youth, I've always said that the youth should be more creative and they shouldn't be afraid to venture into anything. Even when there are failures, that is the time the opportunities are even emerging. It is not a problem. It doesn't matter your culture, background, or it doesn't matter your financial situation. What is important, you don't need to engage yourself in unnecessary discussions, unnecessary things, like some of the things we just talked about. Whereby your mind is sweet into thinking about drinking, going to chase women, thinking about having fun in the nightclub, and forgetting about the main course of your life. The youth should think about giving opportunity to others. Anytime you start thinking about giving opportunity to others, that is when you give opportunity to yourself. So you force yourself to be engaged on meaningful things. Well, what a wonderful moment I've been having a very smooth uh, morning with uh, Mr. Roland Agambire, the group chairman of Agam's group. And uh, he has told us all you need to know. Uh, For the purpose of those of you who didn't uh, hear me when I introduced some of the uh, companies he runs, he has RLG, well, which is what we know and uh, that brought us to him. But uh, coming here, I knew now Craft Pro. Ah, well, the mind you see in suit is still weaving baskets for people. And the uh, Agan Asom Taba. What, what is Asom Taba? Asom Taba is a same local language from Upper East, meaning helping each other. Helping each other? Yes. Wow. <laughs> then what is E Evolution? Evolution is just an event kind of. Event management, yes, management. management. and uh, we have ACI 4K financial services. Yes, that means you can give loan to us if yeah. you care to you know. take some. Yes, okay. <laughs> what of uh, ACI construction company? Yeah, and then Mara Trading Limited. Hmm. Well, it's nice having you on Trailblazers Africa. You are indeed a Trailblazer. We thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to be with you. Thank you. Too. Well, I want to say a big thank you for watching this program. I've been speaking with the chairman of uh, Agam's group, Mr. Roland Agam Bure, and uh, he has told us all we've got to know about how to make a better future for ourselves. I must say that this interview was made possible by his communications manager, Millicent Atugada. Well, she doesn't want to be mentioned, but we have no choice to, to mention her name, because if you do well, we appreciate you, and if you do otherwise... Uh, we also tell the world <laughs> what you do. Well, that is the only weapon we have our mouth and our hand. Well, that's the weapon. I've been working with uh, Stephen Biden, Ivy Johnson. The two of them have been very, very creative and very intelligent today. And uh, you get to know uh, these faces one day. And uh, they are also coming with a lot of things coming from them. I want to thank you for being part of the program. By the grace of God, we'll back your way next Saturday. Exactly same time, same station. And of course, by the grace of God, same face. As, the, as your host, I am Moses Obadi. By the grace of God, I'll see you next week. Bye bye.